Hello and welcome everyone to Season 1, Episode 15, the season finale! I am your host, Orion Moonrose, and tonight we will be reviewing Murdered Soul Suspect. So, without any further ado, let's step right into it. The history of how this game became to be was that Square Enix wished to appeal to a more Western market. So the director or something around there decided to spiel this to Square Enix and they agreed to it, even though I still swear he got it from a Yu Yu Hakusho, or at least inspired by... But while they were making the game, they tried to also blend some of their Eastern culture into it. At least with the ghosts, the spirits, the demons, and whatnot. Which caused an interesting blend of... cultures. The plot is a very simple one. You are a detective who gets killed by a serial killer thrown out the window... And on your quest, you travel to many different places, trying to solve the hardest murder of all, your own murder, with a medium, while trying to figure out who the bell killer actually is. The story is you play as Ronan O'Connor, a detective. He decides not to go for backup, goes up to try to confront the bell killer, which gives Joy a medium time to escape through a window, which she tends to do a lot of entering and leaving. I swear she's Catwoman. But anyway, he gets beat up, thrown out the window, realize, doesn't realize he's dead until he tries to open up the door, and oh, I can't open it. Oh, there's my body. Uh, maybe if I go back into it. Works for a few seconds, so the bell killer's like, no. Takes Ronan's own gun and pops him a few times. I want to say six, but I'm not certain. Well, goes back into the apartment building and learns what's going on, that Joy was there. He then eventually runs into Joy, and the two of them try to solve his murder, and who the serial killer is. Along the way, she keeps sneaking through more windows, which includes a third-story museum. They go to the graveyard, a church, an insane asylum, a museum, and finally some Puritan judge's house then back to the museum. But throughout the quest, you find clues on who the bell killer is, you finally find out who he is, solve your murder, and, well, get to rest in peace. Alright. Next, go, let's go into presentation and music. The presentation, the art style, it's alright. I mean, it, it tries to focus on real colors and real world, but at the same time, it, it adds a ghostly hue, a, a bluish-white, maybe silverish tint that is skirted around the city while you travel it, some blocking your way, some not, which I guess was an interesting way to kind of make the town less accessible and go the route that you need to. The music within the game, it's ambient. You basically s s hear, like, certain sounds or a little bit of music, but for the life of me, you can go back and watch the Let's Play that I did, but I don't really remember anything. Nothing really stuck out. I mean, it was kind of quiet and noises mostly type of music. And for that, I, I guess it worked, but I really don't like how the, they did the music with the presentation of the art style, but I do at the same time. The gameplay itself is moderate. You basically travel around at first, not being able to do too much. You can pass through walls and everything, which 
is neat to do, but at the same time, it kind of breaks. I can go here and there and just about anywhere. You do have a few side quests that involve helping another ghostly figure pass on to the afterlife by solving a, a their murders, which are a lot easier than yours, obviously. And then there's a lot of collectibles, at least a hundred that I know of, and... That was all right thrown in there. I mean, at least they worked. Not so much like, for instance, um, there's a lot of gas cans running around the city, and when you find them, you review it, and if you collect them all, you get a nice little ghost story, which was a nice addition. It, it kind of felt like those horror ghost stories or the ghost stories that you sometimes run into in books or the Internet where, oh, it was so true. But I understand that they wanted to use collectibles, but having a gas can scattered at different locations made it feel less like it was something that was actually there at one time. Like, maybe a, maybe they could have had a gas tank at one area and rope in another. I mean, still the same element of trying to get to said story, but... Other than that, when you start actually fighting, and it is supposed to be a stealth game. I did learn that. It was supposed to be a stealth action. So, your primary goal is to run away from demons. And in that aspect, it, it's nice. They they can sometimes have ADD and, like, be schizo, and then, oh, where did he go? Nobody cares. Runs away. Uh, there's these ghostly images, after images, of... I guess once, what was once, and you can go into that and hide from them. But see, the thing that really got me was, demons sends out souls and eats them, and it's residue. I'm sorry, no. I felt like they should have just started sucking instantly. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's why they're so schizo, because there's so many souls left over that they sense it, and they're like, oh, I guess nothing there, let's check this one over here, and if you jump between them, it works. But you can also do combat and exercise them, that's what I'm going to call it, where there's this black hulking demon, and you basically start pulling the soul out, and it seems like the same soul again and again, so they could have done a little better on that. But then you pull it out, and they turn to dust, ash, something. All in all, the presentation, it was decent. All right. Moderate. The music was poor. Uh, really, it was. I mean, if I can't even remember one track in my own head, it was poor. But not completely poor, because, like I said, the, the sounds and the... Light music also did work because you're in an afterlife, but still focusing around the real world. And because you're still focusing around the real world, it's trying to bring the world into the afterlife, but in a distorted way. So, suppose they did all right. All right, let's look at the reception of the game and what it got from reviewers and other people. Now, as for the reception of how the game came to be, I'm going to rely on my handy-dandy trusty cheat sheet, which, as you can see, I've upgraded from a piece of paper to, well, what used to be a phone. Alright, so, the reception was average for the most part. Most people, get, most people felt it was alright, it was decent, it could have been better, but it could have been worse. Which, for the most part... I sort of agree. I mean, it is sort of average and relies way too heavily on certain aspects, but doesn't focus on them well enough. Uh, the reason why it got average, though, people thought there was cor poor combat, which, okay, I would agree when you really just go up from behind and suck souls, it could be poor combat. But in my personal opinion, no, not poor combat. It's supposed to be stealth. In all honesty, 
if I wasn't just trying to put a little action into my Let's Play, I would have snuck past them all. You know, can't have poor combat if it's supposed to be a stealth game. I assume it was the poor combat because they really didn't ex expect or want people to fight. And, you know, when you don't focus on attacking and just stealth, then you're going to have poor combat in a game. Now, is that going to affect a rating? Well, yeah, they were going after a Western market, and Westerners, we unfortunately tend to care more about combat and guns, which, don't get me wrong, it's not a bad thing. But when it comes to game, I prefer story myself. And I think the story was good. I forgot to mention that in the presentation, but the story was okay. I mean, it was something different and unique, but felt like Yu Yu Hakusho. All right. So, they also said it was short length, that the game itself wasn't very long. This is true. I think, like, three, four hours, if you're not that good at it. Now, I will say... With the achievements and trophies, it does make it a little longer, because can I find all the collectibles? Can I acquire all these these achievements and trophies? That's, that's going to extend the game. And really, that's what I feel achievements and trophies are there for, is to extend the life of a game. Now, was it short? Yes, it was. But at the same time, if they would have tried to make it too long, I think most audiences would have went away, wouldn't have stayed. They would have got bored with it, or the story would have started being diluted. So I think the shortness of it worked. I mean, it's a ghost story, basically. And like I was stating with the collectibles, you collect them. And because you collect them, you get to hear this short ghost story. Well, the game should be the same way, I guess. A short story. A ghost story, but done more professionally and a little longer, kind of like a movie. Now, again, because of the short length, you know, a lot of people are going to still give it bad. And, you know, probably for the price it originally came out for, yeah, I would have to agree. The, the poor length, you can't have poor length in, in a, an expensive game. You have to, in my opinion, do a $29, $39 game. At that point, uh, now that it's at 1996 and under, it's all right. It it works. I don't have as much complaints as I would if it was 59 still. All right. So next up is N. Oh, good. Instead of the piece of paper messing up, instead I just completely lose where I was. All right, they say that there's a lack of replay. There is. Um, you can pretty much collect all the collectibles in one playthrough. I mean, as long as you do not go into the museum at the end of the game, you're basically free to travel through all the places and collect everything that you might have missed and, and really go over everything with a fine-tooth comb. However, the one collectibles that you can't miss is the museum itself. And because of that, that might warrant a second playthrough if people just want to extend the gameplay or complete the game's trophies and achievements. Because if you finish the judge's house, you're pretty much out of luck. You're not getting back into the museum to do the collectibles. But all in all, there is a lack of replay. I mean, if you know this ahead of time and want to collect... It does, it's going to extend the game, but the game's not really too much worth a replay unless you just really liked it and want to redo it again. And a lack of difficulty is the final one on the list. I suppose a lack of difficulty, mostly just due to the fact that they were really relying heavily on the stealth part. I mean... Granted, I mean, if you watch the Let's Play that I did, sometimes those ghosts, like, don't even notice you. Oop, I'm killing one of your friends, and you're basically almost staring at me. <laughs> oh, you're turning around. Let's go. Here. 
I mean, I, there was one time where I almost took three down at a time. The last one caught me. But it's not really, it's lackluster, the combat, because of that. Um, now, when they do notice you, you better hope you can hide and that there's a lot of them. Otherwise, it does get a little difficult there. I'd say like a, a, a difficulty spike, sort of. One moment it's too easy, and then the next it's just... I wouldn't say too hard, just a little aggravating if you've taken down most of them, and then, oh, there's that last one who decided to catch you. But, yeah. It's not really difficult. It's a very easy game. And the only thing I will give on a defense for it is... Again, they were focusing on the story, the stealth elements. So... It wasn't going to be that difficult. I mean, yeah, it would have been nice if maybe they gave a hard, and then maybe the ghosts, there was a lot more demons or something. More stealthy, like Metal Gear sometimes does. But all in all, that's what the reception was to the game, and I agree with most of it, but I defend a little bit of it just because. All right, let's head into my final thoughts. Now, unlike in the movie review that I did for Pixels, I left out the characters and the actors because I, I didn't really feel it would be useful and I could throw it into the final thoughts. And that's one of the things. The characters, they were all right, a little black. Um, again, it's short, so you don't get much character development. And because of the fact that you don't get much character development, you sort of don't care fully, but at the same time you do. I mean, the two victims that I ran into, um, I don't even know their names at the moment, Rose and something else, the girl who got drowned and the girl who got put in fire, they really weren't that rememberable. I mean, I remember their deaths, but then when I had to go and what does this remind me of? I, for the life of me, felt bad at the gala that I couldn't remember which one was which. That We didn't have enough time with them. I, I guessed and got lucky and was like, oh, well, that makes me feel a slight bit better. Um, the voice acting, it was at least okay, slightly strong. I mean, they tried. Um, Ronan and Joy were probably the best of the characters. The Bell Killer started feeling like Jason Voorhees, like when you got towards the end of the game, like he was determined to kill. And I mean, he threw the father from the church and, and destroyed a wedding, and I mean, like, no remorse. Other than that, there's not really much to say on the final thoughts. I, I think I went over pretty much everything pretty well that I wanted to in the review. Uh, the only thing I can add is that I did have fun with this game, and I thought it was alright. Just mediocre. Alright. Let's go ahead and head into the rating of what this got. Now, before I give the final rating, I want to go into a little bit of what others reviewed it as for a rating. And these are, like, major people. Uh, I won't give the names, but most... I took three. One was a 5.5, one was a 6, and one was a 6.5. So, steadily increased. And this is also including the fact of what they said with the reception of how the game went through. Now, in my personal opinion, I agree with it. Um, it is average. It's all right. If they, if they would have focused more on... How do I want to say it? If they would have focused more on letting people know about the game in the Xbox or PlayStation or at E3 or something, letting them know what it was about, the game might have went over a little better. So I think that's one of the reasons why everybody gave it lowish ratings to average ratings. And a little over. As for me, I'm going to give it a 6. 
Um, I'm going to give it a six because the presentation was all right. I, I think I understand where they were coming from with the story and why it was short. Wasn't so fond of the music, so that takes it down a few notches, or at least I felt like it, it could have been a little better. The replayability and the difficulty... Well, the difficulty really, it really doesn't play a part. I mean, as long as I enjoy the story, that's all I care for. And I did enjoy the story. And I actually enjoyed the ghost stories more. So, so six for that. Beyond that, the music, presentation, the gameplay, they coincide all right. And I think they could have done maybe a little better with their PR, their public relations, of getting it out there and letting people know what it's about and how it is. But at the same time, I think that we as Westerners might not have been fully ready for this, or we might not have decided to conceive it the way that they were trying to conceive it, and so we review it the way we do. But it's six. It's average. Well, a little bit above average. Should you go out and buy it for as cheap as it is? It's not too bad of a choice. Um, would I recommend it? Yes. If you like the story, if you think you could have fun with it, go out and buy it. Otherwise, this is definitely just a rental. Maybe not even a buy. Maybe just a rental. I mean, it's a one-time playthrough. You're possibly going to like it. And hopefully after hearing everything that I say, you really are like, oh yeah, maybe it is kind of like that. Or now I have a little knowledge, I didn't watch Let's Plays that you did, because I didn't want to ruin it, and I'm just hearing this or finding me for the first time. So, you know what, it sounds like it might just be a rental. Um, if you do go out and rent it, or heck, even if you did play it, Leave a comment in the bottom. Tell me what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. Let me know what you thought it might have been rating as. What did you think of the gameplay, the music? Do you think I gave it justice um, for what I rated it on? Also, don't forget to like, subscribe. Also, don't forget that I do have a Facebook and a Twitter under the same name, Orion Moonrose. And those are basically more for the show than anything. If you post stuff to me, I will write back. Otherwise, you can keep track of me, see what I'm doing, what I'm not doing. And that's pretty much it for this review and the end of Season 1. I'm your host, Orion Moonrose. I'll see you for Season 2, Episode 1 of the Let's Play of D4 Dark Dreams Don't Die. And until then, remember... Keep gaming and never give up.